the H squared test. As we have talked in the previous class, the G squared test is a statistical test used to determine the independence or not independence in a pair of variables. Okay? In order to do that, uh, we are going to remember the steps. When you perform a G squared test, there are four main steps you must accomplish. The first one, hypothesis. Remember, as it is a test and you are trying to test something, there must be a hypothesis, something that you want to verify or not. There are two of them, the new and the alternative, and they are related to the independence, as we saw it in the, next, in the last class. Then you find the statistic, something about language. What's the difference between a statistics with S and a statistic with no S? Any idea? Mm -hmm. Statistics with S talks about the field, the branch of math, name statistics. A statistic without the last S talk about, it talks about a number. Yes? So the mean, the median, the mode. The standard deviation, uh, the calculated C, the R coefficient, those are statistic. Statistic is a number that provides information without, when you use it without the S. Then we are going to find something named the critical value. The critical value is the one that we use to compare and determine how a statistical testing process work, not only in G squared, on t-test and all of the other ones that you are going to use. You find a value, there's another value to compare. If the values are greater than, you make a decision. If they are greater than, less than, you make the other decision. Is this clear? Yes. Now, let's begin. In order to begin, I will ask you to open your books to page 239. <laughs> it is written there. Page 239. Ready? So, Angela, could you please read the problem? Reading room labels of dark food were based on the grain grid of dogs to find out if there was any connection between the grid flavor and bread. The, the results are given in the table. Okay. So, can you identify a pair of variables there? What are the variables? Breeds of dogs and the flavors. So I want you to determine if there exists any connection, any dependence or independence relationship respect to those two variables. One question, is this variable qualitative or quantitative? Qualitative. That's not, I don't have quantitative data here. That's the main difference between this one and the regression line. When you work with regression line, you have quantitative data. You have two variables, but both are quantitative. So you can do math. But you cannot do math with a poodle who likes fish food. That's qualitative. So G squared allow us to work with qualitative data. Now, hypothesis. We always have two of them. The new hypothesis, H0, and the alternative hypothesis, H1. 
And in the previous class, we explained the purpose of each one of them. What is a zero in this case? Raising hand. Mariana. It states that the data is dependent. But in this case, what will be the new hypothesis in this problem? That the flavor is dependent on the breed of the bird. So, flavor of food and breeds of dogs are dependent. Is it clear? The new hypothesis always talks about dependence of variables. And the alternative hypothesis will be the opposite. It means flavor of food and breeds, not brands, of dogs are not <coughs> dependent. Is it clear? So what is the first thing you must do? State both hypotheses. Why? At the end of the test, according to the comparison, you will have to accept one and reject the other one. That's the purpose. That's what we want you to do. Is it clear? Have you already taken notes? contingency table. Basically, a contingency table is a frequency table. What do you have there? Frequencies. What's the meaning of this nine? Tell me. There are nine terrier dogs who prefer fish food. If you see, that's a frequency table. Like the one you build up when you apply a sorry, frequency table. With one more column. Column of totals. Something about this corner. You add totals per rows, you add totals per columns, and when you add all both columns or rows of totals, you must obtain the same number. So when you'll be performing in real life in Q-square test, if that addition is not the same in both cases, there's something wrong. Now, based on this table, I must construct something related to the expected values table. How are we going to do it? So the structure is the same. And here I will require your help with the calculators. Uh, I'm going to fill the first expected value. Yes? This is the first expected value. What do I have there? I shall put there the expected value of poodles who like beef food. So, how do I find that? Finding the probability of a poodle multiply by the probability of 
B multiplied by N. What is N? The total. the total amount of items, 104. But it's not divided? No, 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 wait. The probabilities will have the division. Okay. Now, what's the probability of choosing a poodle? In total, there are 32. So, it is 32 divided 140. Multiplied by, what's the probability of choosing a dog who likes beef? 61 over 140. And then I multiply it by 140. Please, in your calculators, with three significant figures, what's the answer? 13 and 9. Is it clear? I'm gonna find one more. Let's find this one. There I will write the expected value of choosing a terrier who likes chicken. Okay? That will be probability of choosing terrier multiplied by the probability of choosing chicken food and then I multiply by in. Remember when we studied normal distributions we understood that expected value is equal to probability multiplied by total amount of items in the population. Clear? Probability of a terrier. 37 over 140 multiplied by 44 over 140 multiplied by 140 11 and 6 great now as I told you in the last class if I ask you to show the probabilities you must do this but if you analyze, there's something that happens in all of the cases. In all of the cases, I can cross out a pair of numbers. This with this. This with this. So, in all of the cases, what really happens is 37 multiplied by 44 divided by 140. So, I can understand that the value here can be obtained by multiplying the total of the row, the total of the column, and then divide it by this one. So, the number here must be 32 multiplied by 44 divided by 140. And it's faster. What's the number? 10, point, ten and nine. One. One. Ten point nine. One. Ten. Ten. One. One. Now the next one. Fish. Thirty-two multiplied by thirty-five divided by one hundred forty. Eight. 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 Please complete the table. Complete the table. I'm going to erase the circles. We are going to complete the table and then you will pass to record the numbers that we need.
we're going to see some values and then we're going to compare. Uh, Andres just wrote uh, the second row, 15 and 3, 11, 8, 25. Now, if it is true that there, theoretically, there may be difference because of the use of the calculator, it is supposed that all of you are rounding to three significant figures. So there must not be any difference. Okay, thank you so much. Now we have the table. Have you already taken notes of this? Yes. Okay. Now, finally, we are going to calculate the g squared value. So I, I will ask you, go back a few pages. Go to page 234. Go to page 234, and you will find a expression that I'm gonna write, but I want you to read. expression here but you have it in your book hmm? so boxer and fish 8.75 please verify your answer and this so in that page it says that to calculate the chi squared test value use that formula. What is the meaning of F O in that formula? It says, tell me? The observed frequency. The observed frequency. Where do you find the observed frequency? Where do you find the observed frequency? In which table? In which one? In the contingency table. That was what you observed. This is what you expect. This is what you observe. This is the teacher that you would like to have. That's the teacher you have. So, FO corresponds to observed frequencies, these numbers. And FE, to expected frequencies, the ones that are here. So, I'm going to clarify some things. The first one. There's a mistake. This is the sum of the questions. So, why do we subtract? When we subtract, we're finding a distance. So I'm trying to find the distance between what I observe and what I expect. Clear? Now, why second power? The distance may be negative or positive. When I raise to the second power, everything becomes positive. So that's one of the reasons why in math you see a lot of formula with a square number. Why? We don't know. Do you remember standard deviation? Yes. When you found the standard deviation, you take the distance between the midpoint and the mean and you raise to the second power. Why? To turn them positive. That's the only reason why we raise the square. And then we divide by the expected frequency. So, what am I finding? I'm finding a percent of how close, how far am I from the expected frequencies. Clear or not? Yes. Now, let's begin to write the sum. What is the chi square calculated in this case? First term, 13. Observe. 
minus 13.9 expected raised to the second power divided by 13.9 that's the first term. How many terms will we have? Tell me. How many terms the expression will have? Tell me, I heard. Twelve. Twelve, yes, you're right, twelve. I thought it was that twelve. Yes? Now, plus, what's the next one? 11 minus 10 and 1 to the second power divided plus 8 minus 8 to the second power divided 8. That's easy because that's 0. And so on. How many terms? Twelve. Twelve. So dot dot dot. <laughs> and what will be the last one? Eight. Eight, Eight minus, nine. minus nine squared divided nine. nine. Now, how are we going to do? How are we going to do this? I will ask. Students in this line, you are going to find the first three expressions in the calculator. You are going to perform this in the calculator with the first, with the pool row. This line, you are going to do it with boxer column, with those three values. In here, you are going to do it with terrier values. And you are going to do it with great Dane values. At the end, I will ask and we add. Clear? In your internal assessment project, this must be shown. In this way, the sum and the process. As soon as the first student who finishes in each line finished, raise hand. In this, in this line? Valeria, what number did you obtain? 44 and 42 and everything? And what did you obtain? Uh, zero and fourteen. You must do this plus this plus this. In this line, Lauren. Zero and seventy-eight. In this line. Zero zero two. And in these two lines, Catalina. 0 0.23. After adding, what do you obtain? 0.23. After adding these four numbers. <laughs> After adding these four values, what do you obtain? One and seventeen. So my G square calculated is one and seventeen. I'm gonna write it here. So what 
is the value, the statistic, t squared. Tell me. We had a different response. In? 15 minus 15. Zero? 27. So from where the 78? Please. Please, what's the value with the adjustment, please? Zero? So, that value is the one that you are going to compare. But if you are going to compare, what else you need? The other value. Yeah. To compare, you need two things. That is the sum of the sum of these four. And each this value is these three. Where? Yes. Uh, this is the sum. It means that I have to do this with each one of them and at the end add them all. Then I need to raise this one. Now, we need to compare to compare with, that's the question. There's something named the critical value, and we compare with the critical value. To determine the critical value, there are two things that I need. The first one, in the problem that you are working on, it says something about a significance level. Could you please read it? And tell me what's the significance level, significance level that is asked in this test? No, 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 in the problem. Uh, Tell me. Uh, significance level? That's a synonym of confidence level? 95%. Usually, teacher, why? Because it is like a habit, like an agreement. Usually in the statistics you work with levels of significance of 5%. For your project, that level is good. Now, to determine the value to compare, you consider the significance level and the degrees of freedom. What are the degrees of freedom? Freedoms in which, degrees in which you are free, something like that. The formula says degrees of freedom n minus 1, m minus 1, where n is the number of rows and m the number of columns. In this case, I have four rows and three columns 4 minus 1, 3, 3 minus 1, 2. I have six degrees of freedom. But what are six degrees of freedom? If you don't understand the concept, it doesn't make any sense. Let's suppose that you don't have... Let's suppose that if this is your project and you lost the raw data. You were to test the dogs, you took notes on a notebook, but there was an accident with a water bottle in the classroom. Water bottle over notebook. Data lost. So as you have lost data and you must submit the project tomorrow, what are you going to do? You're going to put some numbers pretending it's data. You are going to be creative with data. Let's do it. I'm going to create data for this. So, um, Angela. Give me a number that I can put here. Mm, 11. 11. I can say that 11 dogs uh, pull like pig. Does it make sense? Yes. Does anybody can give me a number not making sense there? Tell me. 35. 35. 
I cannot write 35 here. Why not? Because the total total. Let's put another number. Uh, where can I put another number? Give me another number in a in a cell that you like. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Uh, but which breed of dog? Uh, poodle. Poodle, chicken. How many dogs? Fourteen. Fourteen. Can be fourteen. Can be fifteen. You choose fourteen. And the next one? Seven. But the next one cannot be the number that I want. No. Yes, seven. This is not the number that I want. This number must be obtained by adding these two and subtract the sum from this one. Mm -hmm. seven. This number is not free. Seven. This is free. <laughs> this is free. This is not. This is calculated. Now, give me another free value. Seven, seven. No. Another free value. Eight. Eight. Where? Um, in boxers. Boxers who like? Beef. Boxers who like beef. How many? Eight. Eight. Here I can put eight or the number that I want. Another free value. Where? I, I don't know if you understand, but the free value is not about the number. It's about the cell. Give me another cell in which I can write a free value. But where? Terrier? Terrier who likes beef. 11. I can put that number. Can I put any number here? No. no. Here, no. The number here must be the sum of these three subtract from this one. Remember that you must create, remember you must create a, a set of data that I believe is true. Can you give another free value? Yes. Where? In boxer chicken. Boxer chicken. What value? Nine. 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 I'm gonna follow Laurita's in this case. Can I give another free value? Yes. Which one? Terrier chicken. Terrier who likes chicken. How many? Four. Twenty. Twenty. Can I give another free value? Yes. No. This number. Let's see the missing number. This number here seven. is this is this minus this plus this. The number here seven. Seven. this minus this plus this that is seven. The number here this minus this plus this. Once you have these three numbers, the sum of these three subtract from this one is this one. And the sum of this one, subtract from this one, is this one. The sum of this one, subtract by this one, is this one. How many numbers could you create? Six. 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 How many numbers can you put freely in the table? Six. Six. Now you understand what are six degrees of freedom? Whoa. The degrees of freedoms are the values that you can invent. <laughs> and the values that you can put in the table randomly. Teacher. So, degrees of freedom are the values that you can put freely in the table. Teacher, what if I do it in other order? You can do it in the order that you want. If you don't want to begin here, if you want to begin here or here, do it. And I challenge you, do it as you want. I Insurance, there are only six numbers that you can put. And those are the degrees of freedom. So I have significant level of 5%, degrees of freedom, 6. And then we are going to compare. This is in your book, in the page that explains. And it says there's something named the critical value. We have not found it yet, no work. If the cheese square calculated is less than the critical value, you do not reject the new hypothesis. On the other hand, 
if the G squared calculated is more than the critical value, you reject the new hypothesis. And immediately, if you reject the new hypothesis, you accept, what do you accept? The alternative hypothesis. Clear? Now you remember what you have to? You have two hypotheses because if you reject one, you accept the other one. Hmm? Do not apply that in real life. Having always two options, and if I don't like this one, then I took this one? No. Now, the calculator, and we will analyze that in the next class. The calculator produces something named the p-value. The p-value is compared with the significance level, and it has the same property. If the p-value is less than significance level, you reject. If it is more, you do not reject. In the next class, I'm going to show how to find the uh, p-value by using the calculator. Now, there's something missing in this process. The critical value. You do not have the critical value. The critical value is given by default. The critical value is a value related to the test, and it appears in a table. Ta-da! You will find this table in your midterm test. I took the picture from your midterm test to put it here. Uh, so, what is the level of significance that we have? 5%. So look at it. 5%. Oh, and I cut the table where it was not. I should have put one more row with Six degrees of freedom. In fact, in the book, in the problem, you find the critical value. That is 12 point... Tell me. 12.59. So in your data booklet and in exams, you are going to find a large table of levels of significance and critical values. And you use that table to compare. A teacher, what if I need that table to do my project? Google, write a significant, a critical values for G-squared test, and you can find a table, large, large. I have some tables, but it is possible to be found. So, no work. So, what's the critical value? 12 and 59. So, I'm going to go back. So, what was the G squared calculated? 0. 66. And what is the critical value? 12 and 59. What do I conclude? The G squared do not reject the Thank you so much, Karito. The calculated value is less than the critical value. This value is less than this. So you do not reject the new hypothesis. You do not reject the new hypothesis. So what that means? That if you do not reject it, you stay with it. And what was the new hypothesis? So, what is the conclusion of all these exercises? That based on the survey you apply to the population of dogs, or the test that you apply there, the food and the breed are dependent. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. The next class we will have time to practice on this. Thank you so much.